everybody, back out Bullion here. Is one of silver's fundamental flaws that it's simply just not valuable enough, certainly relative to its yellow cousin gold. Now what I mean by that is that to have the equivalent amount of fiat currency locked up in silver, you need a lot more volume and weight than you would in gold. We're going to demonstrate that a little bit here today with some of the items we've got on the table because this big 50 ounce bar is the equivalent value, well these two combined are the equivalent value of just one ounce worth of gold. So the simple space and weight ratio has a lot against silver. However, that can really help benefit people in the long run because if silver is just completely undervalued right now and the ratio drops back down to a little bit more like 50 to 1, then all of a sudden you've got yourself a kilo's worth of free silver. So there's lots of different schools of thought on whether or not silver's potential biggest fundamental flaw, the fact that it's not valuable enough, the fact that you have to have large volumes and weights of it, which in itself can be a problem, and we'll talk about that here today as well, really restricts it from being a good buy or an interesting buy to have. Even if you have fractional silver, it all adds up over time to be quite weighty and quite cumbersome. And there may be things that you haven't thought about, like selling at the other end and postage and all of this. So we're going to talk a lot about that here today. Now, if you would like to share your thoughts and opinions on this as we go throughout today's video, then please feel free to do so down in the comment section. Also, I'd ask that if you enjoy the presentation of this video as we go throughout it, then make sure to hit that thumbs up button. It really does help everything on our channel. And the last little disclaimer before we we crack on is that this is just a collection of my own thoughts and opinions. It's not financial advice. It's just me talking at the camera with some shiny things on it about how this relates to me and my situation. So any financial decisions are yours and yours alone. So I've done videos in the past how I think that silver is too cumbersome. It's just not practical compared with gold or even compared with wonderful fiat currencies. We've got a whole bunch of lovely 50 pound notes here to pay into the bank later today, but I thought it'd be good to have them out on the table to put things in perspective because ultimately silver's weight works against it at the other end. Now, a lot of people won't feel that having large weights of silver is a big problem. It's, you know, yes, it's a heavy bar. This bar of silver here weighs about one point, oh gosh, I can't do maths in my head quickly, probably about one point five kilos, something like that. Um, maybe a little touch over that. And, uh, you know, it's fairly heavy. It is definitely heavy to hold in the hand. But in terms of storage, it's really not that bad. It's just a big brick. You can fit that in a safety deposit box or you can fit that in your home safe or in a lock box. You could even potentially hide it around the house. But it actually only constitutes you know, a certain amount of money, probably about £800 at the moment. I can't remember doing my maths in total. But the point is that uh, you could have this and potentially this kilo, this combined is about eight, well, it's eight, seven, no, yeah, 82.15 ounces to be precise, with various, uh, you know, buyer premiums, seller premiums, and things. That's an equivalent, roughly equivalent value to one ounce of gold. Now, I know from experience of storage running a poured silver business where you have a significant amount of raw material silver, it's hard to store large quantities relative to gold. Look at this, just one tiny little coin. You can hide this anywhere in your house, anywhere that's a, you know, a nook, a cranny, a safe place. These are a lot less practical to hold. And certainly if you have a larger budget for buying silver or gold or precious metals generally, silver can quickly add up to be quite cumbersome and quite hard to store. Now storage is one thing and it's not necessarily the biggest barrier to owning silver. It's certainly something to consider. It's something I did not consider when I first started buying silver coins. You know, we wanted to buy, uh, you know, a certain amount to get started and then have a kind of monthly or, you know, every six months budget of buying more. And suddenly it quickly caught up on me that, you know, if I continue this for 20 years, which was the original plan, it's going to add up to a significant amount of weight. And that in itself has connotations for potential uh, resale at the other end. So for me, one of the key areas for selling a lot of the silver that I own is going to be selling it privately to the second hand market. So through eBay or through uh, the Silver Forum or various other uh, social media platforms, you know, getting customers to come to me directly rather than going to a bullion dealer where you'll get a lot worse prices. Yes, granted, you'll have a faster sale, but you'll have lot worse prices. 
So for these type of things, you know, selling a 50 ounce silver bar all in one go is pretty hard to do. You have to strap on quite a lot of extra postage. If you didn't strap on the postage on top of that, you would have to take that out of your margins. It's, uh, you know, it's impractical in terms of storage. And certainly from a liquidity point of view, I feel that gold shines forth much better than larger bars of silver. Smaller denominations of silver are potentially a lot more beneficial Definitely, but they are harder to sell. You know, what do you do when you come to the other end? You've got probably, what, a couple of hundred of these quarters in this box. Do you sell them all individually one at a time or do you sell them in batches or lots? It's really hard to think about and not very practical. Whereas you've got one simple gold coin. This gives you the flexibility of being able to sell to a dealer at a pretty good price because you can get, uh, you know, the swing for us is a lot less here in the UK. So you can definitely get a better kind of protected asset in that sense, it's more liquid. But at the same time, you do need to have somebody who has a lot of cash all in one go. It's not as easy to split up. You know, with this, like, you can sell one of them, you know, pound, well, I think it's probably worth a little bit more than a pound a coin, but you know, pound a coin, you can get that quite easily. Don't have to find somebody with mega bucks to buy those. With these, you have to find somebody with a lot more kind of cash. So there are negatives to the gold side of things. But back to the question about whether or not silver is fundamentally flawed by its weight to ratio. It's more prevalent, I think, for longer term stackers or stackers that have been buying silver or plan to buy silver over time. So if we go back to my original scenario there, uh, we buy precious metals to protect our pensions, to protect our future, to protect the wealth that we have now, to save it, to time lock it for that future. So that when we get to those pension ages, we can start releasing those funds if we need them and uh, enjoy our retirement years. Now, if we buy a certain amount of silver every month for the rest of this 25, 30 years before we retire, then we're going to have an awful high volume of weight. And whilst that's not going to be a big problem for a lot of people, it is something that people don't necessarily think about. Now, one of the problems that I can foresee, and I've talked about this before, is moving large quantities of silver. Yes, if you are going to do the game where I said you're going to sell on the second hand market, that's not so difficult. But if you have literally a metric ton of silver, a thousand uh, kilos of silver over accumulated over 30, 40 years, granted that would be an incredibly high budget stack, but that is going to be nigh on impossible to move quickly. It's going to be nigh on impossible to, uh, to sell quickly and practically. You're going to have to spread that out, spread that around. It's just not going to be possible. Whereas the equivalent monetary value in gold is going to be a significantly less, in fact, 85 times less in terms of its weight. So you'd be looking at much, much less in terms of that sort of practicality side of things. Moving stuff is not necessarily that important to some people, but ultimately, if you are having a large silver stack and you want to move house, for example, or you need to bug out, there's an emergency. What if you were in Australia and there was the Australian wildfires and your house was at risk of burning down and you had a large quantity of silver? Yes, you can stick it in a wheelbarrow, but have you ever tried moving a 50 kilo wheelbarrow? It's not very practical. And because the density of silver is so high, uh, it's all compacted into a single place. It makes it very difficult actually to move things around. The weight is always distributed very unevenly compared with, say, a box. And you have to have pretty heavy duty boxes to hold larger quantities of these type of things. So it is pretty impractical. Now, gold being significantly denser, as well as being significantly more valuable than silver, it compounds the fact that you can have this, uh, this wealth locked up in much, much, much smaller volumes. So yes, the, the gold-silver ratio is 85, 90 to 1, but also the density of gold is just under twice as dense. So in theory, you can have 100 and I don't remember the exact math. Somebody out there will probably be able to work out the exact math of it, but you can have about 180 times the oh, probably a little less 170 times the vol volumetric space taken up in financial terms so that means the same amount of money is going to take up 170 less times as volume which i think is really really key and important uh, certainly in terms of the practicality of owning gold owning physical gold at home or owning physical silver at home now as i said having uh, you know, small denomination stuff is actually potentially even more impractical than the large bars Yes, you can store this stuff, but you know, this box here takes up a lot of space. The value that's in this box, uh, you know, again, a couple of hundred pounds probably, it's just not very efficient in terms of space. And safes these days are very good, 
but they only hold so much space. And if you have to constantly upgrade your safes, get bigger safes, move safes, it's just not very practical. Now, does all of that, to conclude this video, does that all of that mean that silver's a bad buy? Is that the whole purpose of my video? Is that why I'm doing this? No, I don't think so. I think silver definitely has a place. I think if you are a very high-end budgeted stacker and you're looking to save a lot of money over time, then you should definitely consider the fact that having large quantities of silver will be impractical. However, it's not a barrier to entry. It's not a barrier to continuing to buy silver. If anything, it can be a very good thing to buy silver right now because one would argue that it is just so undervalued that it will one day increase in value and as I said earlier in the video the current ratio of approximately 80 odd to 1 with buyers and sellers fees might suddenly one day turn back to 50 to 1 and all of a sudden you've got yourself a free kilo of silver if you trade up or if it goes even further and you end up with 32 to 1 you end up with free 50 ounces of silver so you can definitely play that ratio it's not uh, you know, it's not something that you should ignore. And that's what I tend to do with my kind of buying strategies for, uh, for precious metals. This stuff, the fiat currency, forms an important part of it. It's a diverse portfolio that we have here. We want to have a bit of everything. Having that fiat currency is really important, but changing it into metals is equally as important. When I buy silver, like these bars here, or like these coins here, they are one day going to be sold the gold may be sold, maybe one day, maybe passed down to future generations, who knows. But what we are aiming to do is hold the gold for a very long time. The silver we aim to hold for a much shorter time to then exchange it for that gold. To, well, to exchange it for that fiat currency here, which will then turn into that gold. And that is basically how we work and how I see the practicalities of silver going forward. Now, I want to finish up the video by saying I don't mean to disparage silver buyers and I definitely don't mean to disparage investing in silver. As I said, this is a bit of a devil's advocate style video. If you disagree with my opinion, then I'd be more than happy to have a discussion with you down in the comment section. That's one of the reasons why we make these thought provoking videos. I'd be interested to know what you think about this topic and whether you think that silver in large quantities is pretty restrictive, is a barrier to entry and uh, or barrier to continuing to grow the stack I should say because it's okay to have small quantities of silver but when you start getting thousands of pounds thousands of dollars worth of silver it adds up really quickly and it really can be quite a burden so yeah let me know your thoughts down in the comment section all I ask is that you be respectful of mine and others other people's opinions if you enjoyed today's video as I said put a thumbs up on it and share it around on your social media that would be very helpful for everything that we do here on the channel if you enjoyed this video and would like to see future videos of a rambling series so to speak then make sure that you hit that subscribe button and if you've got an interesting topic or something that you think would be intriguing and exciting to talk about then please let me know and we can look to maybe include it into our schedule going forwards Otherwise, that's it from us today. Thank you one and all for watching. I just can't stop playing with these lovely coins. They're awesome. That's one thing you can't necessarily do with, with gold. You can't have a big pot of gold coins and play with them like Scrooge McDuck. But anyway, I digress, tangents and everything. If you have, a, I'd just like to wish you all a very, very happy week ahead. Thank you all for watching. And please make sure that you like, share, comment, and subscribe for more.